This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe. We got another great show for you today. 2018 is the year when the people of Hawaii get once again get the opportunity to decide whether or not they want to have a constitutional convention. The last convention that we had in Hawaii was in 1978. Now that I think is like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever, it's a long time ago. And we haven't had one since. What, um, what I'm gonna introduce you to today is a series of events that will be held at uh, various places across the islands where we will have an opportunity to talk about the 1978 Constitutional Convention and also uh, decide or discuss whether or not we should have another one uh, these many years later. And I was fortunate enough to be a participant in the last convention, and so I've been sort of dragged out, you see, when that's what they do to us senior type politicians and um, being used as, the, uh, as a speaker in this series of events. Behind the scene, there are a lot of people working to make this possible. And we happen to have such a young man with us today from the School of Hawaiian Knowledge. We have a, a Kaika Hussey. Aloha, Governor. Aloha. You know, it's it's really great to, to, to have somebody like you on the on the on the show, because you actually are doing the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. I mean, you're going around, you're talking to speakers, you're lining them up, and, and the like. So, the logistics of all of this uh, fall right on your shoulders. And you're right. There's a lot of people who are working on this important um, project, and. And I think it gets back to the really important question, which I think we're going to talk about over the next um, you know, several minutes on the show, but over the next several months with your speaking series is, should we be having another CONCON? Should we be having? And it's specifically, this particular series is specifically targeted to Native Hawaiian issues, right? That's right, yes. Now, before we begin, though, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see. I was born in 1978. Oh! <laughs> That's a good beginning. <laughs> it is. You're a and, total product of all of this. Well, I'm not sure what the causality is necessarily <laughs> in, in, in this whole situation, but um, I would definitely say that myself and my generation have been an incredible beneficiary of the work that, that yourself and the other delegates did in 1978. Oh, thank you. Thank because you. We, we get to live in a world where you know we take it as a given that uh, a level Hawaii yeah, really. instance, should be a... a Co-equal with the English language and all these other innovations. Well, we, like, we we really got to get into that. We could we, talk we, about we, that. That is a little timely right now. Yeah, a little it? timely. <laughs> but we, I still want to know more about you. Sure. So you were born in 1978, right, right about the time we were creating a, a new constitution. Right. And uh, we, we, where did you grow up? Go to well, school? A whole bit of it. I grew up on the windward side. My wife and I and our family live in Kalihi Valley. I went to Iolani and UH Manoa. Uh, yeah. And uh, how do you end up with this assignment? Well, you know, I, I work um, I work a bit with John Osorio at the School of Hawaiian Knowledge at Hawaii Nui Akea, and uh, this is one of many projects that we're working on um, at the School of Hawaiian Knowledge. Well, thank you. You know, um, okay, let's get started. So this is a, a series of um, events. Mm -hmm. The first will be this coming Thursday. Thursday. That's right. February 1st. Mm -hmm. And it's be at the law school. That's right. Okay. Who is uh, who are the people besides myself? Who are the people participating uh, in that uh, in that event? By the way, folks, I think um, we can get this up on the monitor. Right. So there is a uh, an online registration form for individuals who want to attend. Seating is a little limited at the law right. school. Uh, we have experts in Hawaiian rights, Hawaiian law, who will be speaking uh, following yourself, Governor. And they're going to be responding to um, 
you know, to the issues that you bring up well, in your discourse. Okay, as I understand it, um, uh, because I was part of the 78 Con Con, right. and you weren't even born, I Maybe get a just chance. just recently born. <laughs> <laughs> I get a chance to, like, tell people about what it was like. Right. But I'm not the only person that was there. Uh, we're also going to have Walter Ritty is going to be on. Right. And also uh, Malia Kutagawa, I believe, will also be speaking. And yeah. And a few other folks. And, and one other person right. not cl from the law school. Yes. Or from, yeah. But um, except for Walter, neither of the other two people were really around in 78 either. Right. Right. So the format of all of this is to talk about what we were trying to do mm -hmm. in 78, Walter and myself, and, uh, and then have your generation sort of react to how, that, how what we did affected, right. uh, affected their, their lives. Yes, and I think also, in addition to that, I think we're also going to be asking for the speakers to do a little bit of prognostication, looking forward and looking at, you know, um, what are the, f the, the future trends that we need to be aware of, that we need to be cognizant of, and based on that, you know, whether or not we should be... Whether we should do at it least... Again. And so the first, uh, February 1st, the topic will be, the, the name of the event is uh, Ina. Right. So I expect that what we will be doing is discussing the impact that the 1978 Constitution had on land issues, right. especially as it relates to, to Native Hawaiians in, in the state of Hawaii. Yes. Um, but there's some fun things, though, and one of them is the fact that, see, Walter really was not a delegate. This is, most people don't know this, but Walter was not really a delegate. What he was, was he was probably one of the leading activists of that decade mm -hmm. in, the, in mm -hmm. the 70s. And he had gone to Kaho'olawe, and he had occupied Kaho'olawe with, with some other uh, people, both uh, kupuna, or, or elders, and young people. Then he comes to the Kankan, Con, and all of a sudden, he is a clerk. He worked for the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. So... That was Frenchie de Soto? Soto. Frenchie de Soto was the chairman. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually looking forward to uh, Walter's experiences because he's the guy that took the proposals that were in the committee right. being discussed and got people to sign off on them. Okay. So I, I mean, I mean I'd, I'd love to hear what he told some of those delegates yeah. that we were doing with respect to land issues. Governor, can I ask you a question? Sure. So given that the Uncle Walter, you know, was not himself a delegate, but came, you know, came from from Kaho'olawe and brought, you know, that's the story of, of, of the of bombing. what and stopping they were the doing, yeah. Kahoolawe. What is the relationship that you see between the, the on the ground struggle, you know, the, the activism, et cetera, and the con con. How do those two things interrelate? You know, it, it's, uh, I told, I was at a meeting recently when I said that for many people like yourself don't realize that prior to 1980, most of the constitutional, state constitutional rights that we all take for granted and exercise, dealing with ceded lands, dealing with access, dealing with language, um, did not exist. Mm -hmm. And the CONCON -con was a chance to, to put it all uh, down. What's interesting in terms of the discussion, obviously, is how that got done, what got done, how it got done. And just as important, I think, um, what, how is it now being used and interpreted? Right. Is it your sense, Governor, that if, if not for PKO, Hokulea, um, no, oh, no, none yeah. of this, that, none of this. In fact, um, I don't want to, you know, like give away our whole uh, program. Just a teaser. <laughs> a teaser. But <laughs> there's not a single, uh, every provision in the Constitution that relates to Native Hawaiians mm. actually spun off of a grassroots movement. Okay. They well, all came, and, 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 and there was somebody or some group that were out there 
uh, you know, working very hard mm -hmm. to secure this. Now, I don't know if people like in your generation, and maybe that's what I'd like to know, actually realized that. They, they didn't realize that, for example, it was the Protect Kaho Olavi Ohana that uh, put together the proposal on access rights because they wanted to go into uh, this military zone mm -hmm. or um, ceded lands revenues mm -hmm. being uh, talked about by the um, uh, Aloha movement. Okay. So these That's are Mrs. that was Mrs. Rice. Mrs. Rice yeah. and uh, and and so many more, so many more. And, and folks, if you really want to know these things, come Thursday. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We're not going to give it away for free now. No, we're going to give it away for Thursday. free on Thursday. <laughs> come Thursday um, to February first at the law school. And it's classroom two, I think. I believe so. And we will have uh, we'll have a great time. We're going to discuss now. It doesn't all end on Thursday. No. Actually, the following month on March eight, we are going to be um, on the Windward Community College, mm -hmm. and it's going to be dealing with. Uh, I forgot the, uh, you, you, the, the the word that we're using for for this event is mo'omeheu or culture and sort of our you know a language tradition yeah yeah language let's chat about language a little bit okay okay because there were you know there was a lot of um, and and this in in this instance I think we, let's get a little bit out there but in uh, my memory um, the lang there were a couple of things that were driving. Uh, the uh, need to recognize uh, the Hawaiian language. Okay. Um, it, it wasn't simply, you know, something like, wouldn't it be cool for Hawaii to be the only state with a native language as their official language? You know, that would have been cool enough. I yes. mean, I would have voted for it just <laughs> on that basis. But there was something more important going on. Mm. Uh, number one, we were in the middle of a renaissance. And people were, for the first time in years, learning their language. And so people like my cousin Larry Kimura on the Big Island mm -hmm. and uh, Kupuna were You're were related to everybody, about. right? Not everybody, but... Isn't Walter Reddy your cousin, too? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's there. all family. It's, 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 a, it's a kind of a Hawaiian <laughs> thing. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hey, cause, you know, and if you're not related, you should be. You know, it's just right. A, it's a matter of... Like, who are you uh, if you're not related to Yeah, you? well, but... Even that has an important sad story because hmm. we're all related mainly because the Hawaiian population shrunk hmm. so, you know, shrunk down tremendously. By ninety percent or so. Ninety percent right? of yeah. the people that were here when the Captain Cook arrived yeah. uh, disappeared. I mean, the population went from a million or so down to forty thousand in a hundred years. Yeah, we're, 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 we, we are related. And today, one of the good things about it is we can talk about it, and, it, and it's an important part of living here. Mm -hmm. But it was a tragedy that caused it, That's unfortunately. True. That's true, Governor. But anyway, um, I know that we, uh, we're going to, we really, I'd like to really get into this language thing a, a little yeah. bit. Okay. Yeah. And so what, what one of the driving forces for doing this was the fact that all of us, in, uh, or myself included, many of us in the Concon, all the native Hawaiians in the Concon, had family stories of their parents mm -hmm. or others being punished mm -hmm. for speaking the language. Right. Being punished for speaking the language. And um, we want to come back right after this short break and discuss why that influenced the 1978 uh, Constitution and lead you, tease you a little bit about the kind of discussion that should be happening on March 8th at the Windward Community College. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. 
So we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of A Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and our special guest, the Kaika Hase from the School of Hawaiian Knowledge. And don't worry, folks, this happens occasionally <laughs> and I take care of it. Uh, it's some politician trying to call it's, me. It's you know? somebody. It's always something. Somebody. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Where was we? Oh, where were we? Oh, folks, if you want to call in, the number is 808-374-2014. And we welcome phone calls. So, you know, all of us, my, my parents um, grew up being forbidden to speak Hawaiian. Mm. And in fact, we had an episode in the beginning of the uh, century, right after annexation, when the legislature, uh, when the legislature of the of the new territory of Hawaii refused to conduct business in anything but Hawaii, hmm. and the United States then refused to accept anything that they passed because it was written in a foreign language. You see. So this is kind of our cultural history. Sure. Now all of a sudden in the 70s, it, it's coming back, you right. know? Yeah. So the idea was to make it, to make sure that that never happened again. Mm. That that never mm -hmm. happened again. That our people would never be punished for speaking their language. Yeah. Which, by the way, just as a diversion, was very upsetting to see what happened uh, to uh, Kalekoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who is a well-known um, activist, but also a, a professor. That's right. So this is not this is not somebody. No, he's not just, just somebody. Trying to act up. No. I mean, this was a professor very who respected. actually is yeah. very articulate in the native tongue, and he was recently issued a bench warrant yeah. for wanting to speak his right. native tongue in in. Um, in court. Right, which the judge subsequently reversed. But. Well, yeah, he did, but nevertheless, what was shocking about all of that is how could this happen right. in 2018? Right. After all these years when, you, you know, specifically done. Now, what is kind of interesting to me and uh, was the fact that the, what the analysis, the legal analysis that the court used to see whether he was entitled to an interpreter was uh, based on, the, um, uh, on a civil rights uh, statute, hmm. who base, which basically says if you can't speak English, you, you, you can have an interpreter. I mean, why did we go there? I mean, where we should have gone was to the Hawaii Constitution mm -hmm. and said, boom. It's, it, it's right there. Right there. Yeah. You need to speak it. So that's, that was the, a, a major driving force, so that something like uh, what happened wouldn't happen ever again. Sure. And then it popped up. The other one, which I think a lot of people is a little bit more subtle, the other objective was the, um, the fact that all of the original documents dealing with land title in Hawaii are written in Hawaiian. That's right. And one of the, pro and, and it was uh, without the change uh, of uh, making Hawaiian a, um, the state language, what, would, what was happening was that these original documents were then being interpreted by court interpreters who were generally biased to the government mm. And the interpretation became the controlling document instead of the original, original language. Document, yeah, yeah. So this, there was something a lot more than just being cool. 
Mm -hmm. And so that will take up, uh, hopefully, well, we can take up any of these issues at any time, but that will be March 8th at Windward Community College, right? Right. And then when's the next one? April 12th, and that's going to be at, at the Judiciary History Center. And what, do you know uh, what the topics are generally? So the topic for that event is Ola, or health. Oh. And I'm not sure if the panel has been finalized, but you know, can you give us maybe a, your thoughts on well, the aspects of the Constitution that would I, deal with that? I, you know, Hawaiian health was very important. I mean, once again, um, and in this area, it was mostly uh, indirect. We didn't do like the Hawaiian language where you took it in and so, but it was really health and the healthy environment mm -hmm. and the need for agricultural lands and, and the rest, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so we will be doing that on April 12th. The, the last event in, on May 10th will be at the... It's gonna be at the, the um, Center for Hawaiian Studies. Okay, and that's going to be... On air. Oh, that's going to be fun. It will be exciting. Yeah, because first of all, the CONCON, I, th I don't think anybody realizes, but it was the kind of the happening the same time that the whole idea of self-governance, mm -hmm. um, sovereignty actually, uh, was uh, being discussed in the Hawaiian community. The, I, and it didn't really originate with the Hawaiian community. I mean, it was being discussed all over. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the war on poverty mm -hmm. was very, very heavy on, um, uh, on uh, management of their own resources, of, P of beneficiaries' resources and everything. So folks, this is going to be a great opportunity. I mean, we got four, we're going to go into depth on how these uh, provisions that are currently in the Constitution, I, I'm trying my best not to give away any stories and make any, make any predictions, but we are, at each of these events, there will be my, my, I will be given a chance to tell a little bit about my story in the CONCON. Uh, others will have uh, people who were there in 1978, mm -hmm. as well as people like yourself, uh, self, who, you know, was not was born about the time that we were talking about all of this. Yeah. Um, it was an exciting time. Yes, I, absolutely. And uh, what else? You want to know anything about it? I'm going to let you be the host for a few minutes. Okay. I wanted to ask you if you could share. Um, I know one of the documents that, that came out of the CONCON was this idea of Palaka power. Can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was interesting. Um, well, first of all, given the context of the CONCON, I, I think um, most people don't realize because the, uh, the uh, Native Hawaiian issues became subsequently, following the CONCON, very prominent, that actually when the CONCON started, it really, Native Hawaiian issues were not even on the agenda. Mm -hmm. it, it really was uh, a kind of a establishment versus, it was a two establishment. The, the, there's this press, you know, the, the press, and, and I know they don't like to be called the establishment, but the star, the advertiser had decided that uh, they needed to, we need to have a con con, and these are the issues mm -hmm. that would be would be discussed, and they list them out there. Right. And uh, Star Bulletin jumped in it, and they were on one side trying to look like, or be the reformers. And then the other side of the of the con, con was the uh, the political establishment, the unions, the big business people, and they had an agenda which was exactly opposite. Okay. You know? And Native Hawaiians were out here uh, somewhere protesting. <laughs> Conditions sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. And they decided yeah. uh, when after we we got the CONCON uh, started that their issues this was an opportunity for their issues to be heard. How many delegates were there in the semi CONCON? There was a hundred and one, and maybe about ten at the most, I think, or, or something very close to that. Were were Native Hawaiian? Really? Yes, yeah, wow. less than ten percent. Okay, but. Um, Thanks to people like uh, Auntie Frenchie De Soto, 
uh, and others, we, uh, the Hawaiians got to be very, very significant. And one of the reasons was anti Frenchy or Frenchy hired. She hired the protesters. That's why Walter Ritty is so interesting, because he went from being an activist on the island to a committee clerk actually talking people into their signatures for something that went into a document. Mm -hmm. So I think that that whole transformation would be interesting. Now, on my part, what was, uh, what became apparent once we started the CONCON was that there, the, there was a third way. Mm. There was a, a, a third way that hadn't been discussed in public, hadn't been, and it generally had these aspects. It was uh, environmentally oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, the CONCON came out with things like uh, the Water Commission, with a great deal about uh, the environment. It, it, it came uh, with the right to sue for a, a clean environment. It had Hawaiian rights as it's one of its major issues, and everybody talked about that. It, tried to make the state more fiscally responsible, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lot about that. So there were these other issues, and they needed to be a cohesive way of expressing it. I mean, how do you express a political philosophy that's different than the, the prevailing views? Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we created a counter-philosophy. And the counter philosophy was called Palaka Power. Mm. And if people want to know more about it, <laughs> gets to come on over and we'll get started February 1st right. at the Richardson School of Law with the issue of Aina, but also with some of the process and March 8th and Windward Community College and April 12th at the Judiciary and May 10th at the UH uh, Hawaiian study. So, yeah. Palaka Power was a chance for us to define a vision that looked at institutions differently than the other people who were participating in the conference. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining me. Thank you, Governor. You were a... Uh,